Now we will consider what happens if we have a continuous distribution of charges instead of a discrete distribution. So to generalize to continuous distribution, let's say that we have this uh, arbitrarily shaped object which has uh, charges delta Q1, delta Q2, delta Q3, etc. So these are uh, differential charges. So the total uh, object basically has a continuous distribution of charge. For each small charge element, uh, we can define a unit vector, for example, for delta Q1, R1 hat. And if we place a test charge at point P, we see that the electric field due to delta Q1 will be delta E1 uh, because the delta Q1 we're assuming positive and the test charge is positive, it will be uh, basically in the R1 hat direction. Similarly, for delta Q2, which is at a distance R2 from point P, we will have an electric field delta E2 uh, pointing in R2 hat direction. So that's pointing from delta Q2 to point P where our test charge is located. And for delta Q3, which is at a distance R3 from point P, we will have an electric field set up delta E3, which will be pointing in R3 hat direction. So remember that for these discrete charges, uh, we, we have to add up the contribution from each charge. Uh, it's k times sum over i, where i is the index for the charge, delta qi divided by ri square ri hat. So, uh, for example, we have delta q1 over r1 square r1 hat multiplied with k, that would be delta e1. And for delta e2, we will have k delta Q2 over R2 square uh, R2 hat, uh, so, uh, so on and so forth. So if I add these contributions in the limit that delta QI goes to zero, so that means I take a very small uh, charge element here, this summation will converge to an integral. So it will be replaced by K integral, uh, integral over the volume of the charge distribution uh, delta dq over r square r hat. So this will be our generalized version of the electric field due to a continuous charge distribution. Now, uh, we, we can have uh, three different scenarios. We may have a volume charge distribution. So uh, if, we, if we name the volume charge density rho, that is the total charge Q divided by volume uh, V for a uniform charge distribution, total charge divided by volume, that's coulombs per meter cube. Um, we can consider this scenario or another scenario would be a surface charge density. That is the charge is distributed uniformly over a surface area A, Q over A, coulombs per meter square or linear charge density lambda Q over L coulombs per meter. So basically uh, these definitions rho, sigma and lambda being total charge divided by the total volume area or L are corresponding to the scenario where I have a uniform uh, distribution. So this is the uniform case. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if the charge is non-uniformly distributed, then I can calculate dq as rho dv. So rho would be, instead of being q over v, dq dv, sigma would be dq dA and lambda would be dq dL. So uh, this dq in this uh, integral will be replaced by rho dv, sigma dA or lambda dL for the case of non-uniform charge distribution. Okay, so basically we have used the superposition principle, calculate the electric field due to each charge element in the continuous charge distribution, add them up. In the limit delta QI goes to zero, this summation turns into an integration, integral K dQ over R square R hat. And now we address the issue of how we calculate this 
dq for a volume distribution it's rho dv for as an aerial distribution it's sigma da for a linear distribution it's lambda dl lambda is linear charge density sigma is surface charge density and rho is volume charge density if this is a uniform distribution then rho would be equal to q over v sigma would be equal to q over a and lambda would be equal to q over L.